people are concerned with so many things in this world. Above all, they are concerned with money. People are very, very eager to have material comfort. So here we see an interesting situation that I'm a sannyasi. All I do is run around the world and speak about this topic. And I interpret according to my understanding, according to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own words. And whatever motivation is there, it should not be for anything mundane. Not even for name and fame. Because name and fame is another detraction, it's a disturbance in spiritual life. We should go for the truth, we should go for the eternal blessings. And then you look at us, I mean, we aren't that young anymore to think about dreaming to be happy in our party life. Huh? So, I mean, nobody's going to look at us for material enjoyment. But for giving some spiritual insight, let me close that door, please. For giving some spiritual insight, speaking about Srila Prabhupada and his teachings, giving explanations about the Shikshastakam, not only we can do that, we should do it, we must do it, and it should be done, because this is the most important message for the humanity. If at this point we are thinking about glamorous experiences, of journeys for enjoyment, or dressing in Lagerfeld costumes or something, uh, then this would only be a shame that we haven't learned our lesson at all. We are dreaming of the mundane, dreaming of that which drip, dripples away within seconds, which disappears at, at, as the sun gets hot. Mm? So, like a tottering uh, drop on a lotus leaf will not sustain against the sun in the midday. So, everything is dried, including our own body. And we have to understand that we are here transitory, just a learning experience. And that is why this philosophy is perennial. It guides us, it's, it gives us uh, the understanding for the appropriate living. And whether you are Vihasta or Varnaprastha or Sannyasi or young Brahmachari, it makes no difference. When you sit and you speak on behalf of the truth, it's the truth, perennial truth. What's the perennial truth? Well, you're eternal, that's one perennial truth. Consciousness is eternal. Another, another perennial truth is that you're going to have to pay for whatever you do. No exceptions here. Unless God wants to release a particular type of amnesty by His supreme power, that is up to Him. But we all have to pay. We have to pay our dues, our debts. And anybody we made suffering, this will come back to us as a reaction. So, it's very important for us to accept that we are responsible and we should do everything possible for getting spiritually conscious, expanding our conscious to the maximum degree to understand what is our position once we have left this body. And what is our position while we are still in this body? Two things we have to understand, and the Vedas give us a very clear clue about it. The Vedas tell us, you can come back here and reap reactions for whatever you do. You can go to higher planets by preparing yourself in a particular way. There you're going to have some incredible amount of enjoyment, but they're mundane, they're worldly, only in the highest sense, 
and you will have to come back to this world afterwards again. So in a way, you're just wasting your time if you want to go there. It's just like if you are living in a suburb of the poor people and then you're allowed to live for one year in Beverly Hills in a mansion. And after that, you're going to be kicked out from there and you're going to come back to your poor neighborhood. So this is the same. Okay. Did you really gain something? That year in Beverly Hills, was that really so important? And you just lived the same thing. Drinking, they're drinking also alcohol in the, in the poor neighborhood. Watching TV, there's a TV even in the slums. Uh, having sex life, even cockroaches have sex life and mouse and, and everybody else. So what is the big deal of your big mansion? It was just a temporary illusion. You went there. You were allowed to live in a mansion. So now, have you become a greater personality by living into this lavish experience? No. So going to the heavenly planets is a waste of time. So the Vedas give you other prospects. They say you can go for liberation. You can go for trying to finish the repeated birth and death, to go beyond the world of suffering, and to go into the world of spiritual substance. In this case, something like a stage where you are absorbed into the cosmic consciousness, the cosmic divine, white light, and you're becoming one with Brahman, Brahman, one with that cosmic energy and your individual perception becomes so diffused that you hardly notice your own existence. It is just a one cosmic consciousness. Even though, according to the Vedas, you retain some dormant individuality. But anyhow, that's another subject. So that's one thing. Get rid of the repeated birth of death and enter into a, some kind of a ecstatic truth consciousness without any claim or any specific emotion. No, just a state. That's another invitation, the Vedas issue. Then the Vedas say, but if you want to have the fulfillment to the maximum degree of uh, your spiritual connection. And first of all, understand the super soul. The super soul is Paramatma. He is in the heart of everyone. He is present and he knows everything. He knows you and he's the one who can give mercy. As a matter of fact, a personal relationship with him requires that you say, my Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. If you want that inner master to guide you, if you want him to take fully charge of you and your future, you have to surrender to him. And that surrender means through the spiritual master, you have to become an instrument of the divine purpose. And in this way, prepare yourself for qualifying to enter into a relationship with God in his domain, which you don't know much about. You can read about it. The Vedas give information about Vaikuntha, the world beyond fear. Yes, you can go there, you can be there, and you'll be engaged in divine service. Anyhow, there's one very special feature which the Vedas talk about, where you can fall in love with God, which is higher than just fulfilling your duty. Falling in love with God means you aspire to be with him in his divine eternal realm and to be there and to uh, have no other business, to be selflessly, one-pointedly dedicated to his pleasure as a loving devotee, following the footsteps of the Braja Gopis of Vrindavan, and thus go that way and no other way. This type of uh, dedication has been taught by Lord Chaitanya and his followers in a very promoting way. They've said that is the highest way you can relate to God. There's different degrees of love. There's parental love. There's friendly love, servitor's love, and there's conjugal love, which is considered the highest of all. And that is possible, this falling in love with God, according to that 
invitation given to us and coming to us in the, in the specific Sankirtan yoga process in this congregational chanting of the holy names and taking shelter of the names of God and becoming an instrument of his love and like that. So these are the different proposals which are there. Now, you have to make up your mind because you have a very limited time for the choice. I mean, really limited. If you think another 30 years is a lot of time, it goes away in, the, in one, one cranking. Huh? The older you get, you get, you see times flying by more faster. There's not much time left. And if you don't realize that, then you're foolish because it's like an 80-year-old lady dressing up like a Barbie doll, you know? Uh, this is, I mean, it's just, it's awkward. It's, it's, it's a waste of energy. But you can see it, no? It's, it's going on right in front of our eyes, but we don't need it. We need spiritual enlightenment, and this is what these scriptures provide. The Vedas are very concrete, the Vedas are very friendly, the Vedas are very generous, the Vedas are very freedom-giving. They say, Krishna says himself to Arjuna after he presents all the knowledge, now you see fit, you see what you really want to do. You have to do what you are feeling convinced of, not that he says, putting a pistol on his chest says, you do what I say or I kill you. Not at all. No. So the Lord is very amazing how he's giving freedom and participation to all of us. And it is amazing that this invitation, it is so concrete. It is so charming. And still the people do not pay even attention to the invitation. Okay, whether they accept the invitation is another thing. But they even make every effort to ignore the invitation. You know, we are, we are studying, we are supposed to be a scientific culture, no? <laughs> Good joke. They study bones, they study stones, they study uh, sounds from the universe. Mm -hmm. Some people sitting all day and listening with super duper antennas, what sounds coming from the sky. Uh, and anything they can perceive, anything which goes on their meter, it raises a little attention. Then beep, 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 beep. They go, whoa, 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 we heard something, we heard something far out. Now they're going to study beep, 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 beep for the next three years, you know, uh, and get everybody to listen to beep, 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 beep. Uh, but that there is the message of God coming down to the world through the Supreme Lord himself appearing here and speaking his Gita is not given even the benefit of the doubt. They are not giving any attention to it. They are not analyzing the value of it, a message or anything. No, no, no. We are not religious. No, we are not. We don't. We don't belong to this this uh, type of society, which is sim simply motivated by some spiritual dreaming. And, or for example, they say, no, we are not superstitious. We do, we cannot believe that God would have come to this place. No, of course. What they're trying to tell me, you know, and reincarnation, I don't know, you know, I mean, and the soul, we don't really know, we don't really think that we have a soul, or that we are a soul, or that we have an existence beyond this body, no, I really, I really don't think so, I think we should be more concerned with Wall Street, and what's happening in the economical world, what's happening in Iran, or in Iraq, right, and this is really important, isn't it, so in this way, they they just brush it away the most substantial and comprehensive information about your identity about your duty about family relationship about higher truths about destinations possible they don't pay attention to it it's not common knowledge it's not given to children for being able to incorporate it one of the purposes, the OIDA therapy manual was published, so that people in a very impartial way can say, this is what the traditions are saying. This information is available. You don't take it in consideration. It's your fault. It's not because it never has been taught. It's just because you didn't pay any attention to it, you know. That's why we sing beautiful mantras. That's why we 
cook delicious foods. This is why we make nice festivals and milas. This is why we decorate our temples, books and websites. This is why we invent all kinds of things to try to, to pull people's attention. Come and notice the information is about you, my friend. It's not for me. I already know it. It's for you. You don't know it. You get drunk. You make abortions. You create trouble. You destroy the environment and you think there's no other reason to stop this behavior because you think there's no reason to live to begin with, you know? You think it's only a one term you have here and like one person wisely said, if you believe in re reincarnation, recycle. Huh? <laughs> because you're going to be coming back and it's going to be gone. Uh, all the resources are drawn, dragged out, to destroy it, and now you come back and you see the mess. Uh, so in this say, in this way, it said, uh, be aware, understand this. But we are running an uphill battle here, uh, because everybody is running, running, running in a dream. Just like when we had on Harinam the other day, uh, there was a stream going on. No? One person in this, one person that, everybody trying to take a picture, everybody going to the restaurant, everybody eating his ice cream and everything. And then they saw the devotees and they went like, wow, what is this? No? Uh, but because we are coming with a message of love, you know, you see they look, they dance, they do anything, but they don't listen. You may have noticed that even the friendly reception we got was not a listening reception. Because if I see somebody so far out as this beautiful Harinam, I want to stay there and I want to find out what are these people all about? What are they saying? I mean, we even sang in understandable way, but it's, it's very hard. The ego is rebellion. Ego rebellion. No! I don't want to hear anything. I am doing the best thing. Amazing, huh? How devastated people are in their internal private life and how little readiness of listening they have. Anyhow, this is the situation. This is the situation and we should model upon the mercy we have received from Srila Prabhupada that we can have a different consciousness, really. You don't be, become puffed up because of it. If you become puffed up, it's, it's useless, you didn't get anything. But we should really uh, cherish and model this extreme mercy we have received that we are able to know about this and, and be able to have a very charitable disposition towards the other people. But how to make, how to reach out, how to do all these things, this is really... We are longing to find out proper secrets to reach the hearts and touch them and give them the enthusiasm to go and preach and change the world. Personally, I think Prabhupada's influence in this world is much bigger than it is noticeable. Indirectly, through many ways, Prabhupada reached out and, and here we are, still with some energy out and take his message out there, make people aware of the message of love of our Guru Dev. And of course, when Uttama Bhakti ends up as a traveling, preaching sannyasi, now that will be another story as well. Huh? That will be another powerful injection into the mission of Lord Chaitanya. And so do we all have that duty to be very serious and do something very serious in our life. And if we are married, we have to be very serious to not forget the preaching, being married. That's also true. That's a special request on our grihastas to not get swallowed up by only concerns of raising children, but they have to be raised nicely, no? They have to see that we are doing a good job.
Therefore, many times when I relate to people, I first ask them, what are your goals? What do you really want to do? <laughs> what, is, what is it what you are set out for? Hmm? And then try to encourage them. That whatever you do or whatever you aspire to do should be blessed by Guru Shastra and Sadhu, otherwise you probably fail. We have so many projects for connecting to Krishna. 